All right, let's do this problem. It says to factor over the complex numbers. So, obviously, this doesn't factor with real numbers. If it did, I could just factor it like old-fashioned, what multiplies to this and adds to this, and I'd be done, but it doesn't work. So, what that means is that there's, there's going to be, actually, let me put that back here. If it would have worked, I would have done this. And there would have been something. It would have been like minus something. Actually, it would have been plus something and plus something or minus something and minus something. Something like that. And this right here would have been your zero. Or I should say, if we set this whole thing equal to zero, it would be your zero. Let me just show you an example of that. x squared plus 3x plus 2. That factors into x plus 2 and x plus 1, which means negative 2 and negative 1 are your zeros because if I set these things equal to zero and solve them I get negative 2 and negative 1. So remember your zeros or roots are related to factors which could be multiplied together to give you your standard form equation. So that's kind of the simple thing with real numbers we've done that in Algebra 1. Well now we're going to do this with the complex numbers when we see this, we say, well, that doesn't really factor with real numbers, but it does have zeros. There's going to be two zeros, and when I find those two zeros, I'm going to stick those two zeros back in to this, and actually the way I'm going to plug them back in is I'm going to put a minus sign here. Because if my zero is negative 2, then x minus a negative 2 is my factor. So again, if 5 is your zero, then x minus 5 is your factor. Every zero is related to a factor, every factor <coughs> is related to a zero. And so we're going to find our zeros, our complex zeros of this green equation up here, and then we're going to plug them in to that right there. So let's do this. I'll do this on the next page. So here we go. x squared plus 2x plus 10. I'm going to show you the two ways you can do this. The first way is with the quadratic formula. I'm solving this equation because I'm finding the zero. So I set it equal to zero and I solve it using the quadratic formula. Remember, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which means I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 40 all over 2. Sorry, I said 2a. I didn't need the a there because a is 1, which means negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 all over 2. And the square root of negative 36 is, I'm going to need some extra space here, negative 2 plus or minus 6i all over 2. And now I could distribute the 2 into the top. Both have to distribute it. So it's negative 1 plus or minus 3i. Those are my two zeros, negative 1 plus 3i negative 1 minus 3i. That's by using the quadratic formula. Now what people don't like to use is completing the square, but I'm going to show you completing the square because it's actually easier when you have a problem that has a leading coefficient of 1 and b, or the linear coefficient, is even. So watch how I complete the square. I'm going to rewrite x squared plus 2x plus, I'm going to leave a big space here, and I'm going to put the neg I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides negative 10 plus, now that same thing, I kind of ran out of room there, negative 10 plus the same thing. So whatever I put here, I also have to put there. I'm keeping my equation balanced. And what am I going to put there? Well, it's called completing the square because I need to square, I need to turn this side into a perfect square. And the trick to do that is to take half of that and square it and put it there, which means I also have to put it there. What's half of, or I'm sorry, what is this factor into now? x plus 1 squared, which is nice. And what does this equal? Negative 9. And you can see already what's going to happen. Uh, how do I get rid of the 2 here? I'm going to try to get the x by itself. I take the square root. What's the square root of negative 9? 3i. Plus or minus 3i. Don't forget the plus or minus. And now how do I get rid of the 1? Subtract it. 
it actually was easier to complete the square if you knew how to do that. So negative 1 plus or minus 3i. So let's go back to our problem and let's put those in. So here my two zeros are going to go in here now. I'm going to have to use a little bit more space. I've got x minus negative 1 plus 3i and x minus, what was my other zero? Negative 1 minus 3i. And there's how you factor it over the complex numbers because now I wrote it, no, granted it's not pretty looking, but those are the zeros. These are the zeros right here. And I found them by using either factoring, or, or I'm sorry, completing the square or the quadratic formula.